water. It makes up more than 98% of regular coffee and about 90% of espresso, so it's going to have a big impact on flavor. But water quality is about more than taste. It's also important for the health of your brewing equipment. Hey, coffee lovers, Mark here from Whole Latte Love. You want two things from the water used for brewing. It should be right for flavor and easy on your equipment. So today I'll have taste tests of coffee and espresso made from two very different types of water. I'll have a real world example involving this watering can of what could happen to your equipment with well-intentioned use of ultra pure water made by reverse osmosis or distillation. We'll take a look at my favorite solution for water treatment that supports flavor and the health of your equipment. And I'll finish up with a best practice tip for users of espresso machines with heat exchange or dual boilers. So a lot of things going on with water chemistry, but my focus today is mineral level, usually referred to as a water's hardness. So how do minerals affect flavor? Well, Water is the solvent which extracts flavors from coffee, and it's a good one. But if you remove all the minerals, it's an even better solvent. Use mineral-free water like reverse osmosis or distilled, and you'll pull more undesirable bitter flavors from coffee. Beyond that, water with no minerals is flat in flavor. Kind of like cooking with no salt or seasonings. And aggressive mineral-free water can leach metallic flavors and even cause corrosion of some metals in brewing equipment. For our drip coffee flavor test, I used our own Crema Wave coffee roasted just three days ago. Using a Baratza Vario W Plus, I ground two equal doses of 53 grams to make six cups of coffee. For brewing, I'm using two Ratio 6 drip brewers, which are SCA Gold Cup certified. For brew water, on the left, I'm using nearly pure reverse osmosis water with two parts per million total dissolved solids, or TDS, which is a good measure of the mineral level. On the right, I'm filling with tap water that tested at 150 parts per million TDS. The tap water was then filtered using a BWT Penguin pitcher. TDS out of the pitcher was 116 parts per million. BWT products use calcium to magnesium ion exchange plus activated carbon to remove chlorination and other chemicals. The calcium to magnesium exchange maintains a mineral level for good flavor while eliminating lime scale formation by reducing calcium. The SCA certified Ratio 6 Brewer has a bloom cycle which allows our freshly roasted coffee to off gas prior to brewing. After brewing, I did blind taste tests with 10 tasters in two groups. For those, I labeled the bottom of the cups, poured, and then randomly arranged the cups before the testers entered the room. You can see one of the groups here, the tasters, they have varying levels of coffee experience. I asked them to sample both cups and then put their favorite forward on the table. When all had made a choice, they revealed their decision and <laughs> talked about the flavor differences. Of the 10 who tasted, eight selected the coffee brewed with the BWT pitcher filtered tap water as their favorite. To generalize their comments, the coffee from the filtered water was sweeter, smoother, and cleaner. When it came to the coffee brewed with the RO water, all eight with a preference for the filtered water said the RO brew was more bitter. Three tasters mentioned a rubber flavor taint and two described chemical or metallic flavors in coffee brewed with the RO water. For espresso flavor, I again used the two water types. This time it was just AJ and I. Again, I'm using the fresh Crema Wave, a coffee we are both very familiar with. I dialed in and brewed with a BWT filtered water first. I'm using the new ECM Puristica to extract the espresso. I chose the single boiler PID E61 Group Puristica as it has an easy to drain boiler for flipping to the other water type. We tasted those shots and discussed our flavor notes. The Crema Wave at about three days from roast had the brightness we'd expect from a fresh coffee. We don't always drink it this fresh. Beyond a little extra brightness, the shots were what we expected from a coffee we know so well. Sweet and pleasant with no bitter notes. I then drained the Puristica and refilled the machine with a reverse osmosis water and flushed it through. 
Using the same grind, dose weight, and one to two brew ratio, I pulled more shots and we tasted those. They were very different. The mild, fresh brightness was gone and we both thought the shot started flat and finished with a distinct bitter bite that lingered for a long time after tasting. Bottom line here, in our taste test, yeah. Ultra Pure RO Water significantly degraded flavor. But how might it affect brewing equipment? Now, in past videos I've done on descaling and water quality, I usually get some comments from people who are using or asking about using RO water to prevent scale. So, what about that? Well, you're right, you will not get scale, but beyond flavor issues, you might be damaging your equipment. If you need to start with RO or distilled water, be sure and remineralize before use to prevent those problems. And here's my potential real world example of that. About nine months ago, I picked up this metal watering can. I have an RO system at home to make water for saltwater aquariums. I started using the can and the RO water for house plants. Before watering the plants, I do add back some minerals, calcium and magnesium, plus some liquid fertilizer right before watering. Now, the trouble started not long after I got into the habit of leaving pure, untreated RO water in the can for a few days at a time in between watering. Started to notice some corrosion in the can. A few weeks later, the soft metal soldered seam at the bottom of the can started leaking. Now, this was in no way a scientific experiment, just what happened in a metal can I had stored pure RO water in from time to time. It's possible this might happen with regular tap water in the can. I don't know for sure, but do a little research. It's well documented. Ultra pure water causes problems with some metals, including the copper found in many machines. So to treat your taste buds and equipment right, do not use ultra pure RO or distilled water without remineralizing. In the description, I've linked a video with a low cost way to do that. Otherwise, consider filtering your tap water to reduce scaling potential. I like products from BWT Water and More like their Penguin Pitcher, or they have in-reservoir pad filters up to inline systems for plumbed in applications. In addition to particle and carbon filtration to remove chlorination, they use patented calcium to magnesium ion exchange to maintain a mineral level for good flavor while eliminating scaling potential when used as directed. This is especially important for dual boiler espresso machines, which are difficult to descale. And here's that best practice tip if you have an espresso machine with a heat exchange or a dual boiler. Be sure to take some water out of the hot water tap on a regular basis. If you only ever take steam from the boiler, over time, minerals will concentrate in the boiler regardless of any water treatment and lead to scale formation. You don't need to turn over a lot if you heat cups with water from the boiler or make Americanos or similar on a regular basis, you're gonna be covered. Otherwise, a cup or two every now and then is all you need to do. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and it helped you out. As always, if you have any questions, use those comments and I'd be happy to get you a detailed answer. And if you love this stuff like I do, I invite you to subscribe. I'm Mark and I hope you'll come back soon for more of the best on everything coffee brought to you by Whole Latte Love.